80 years and 4,000 miles removed, but there's still a strong connection to Anne Frank that still resonates today. Welcome. Hi. Welcome to the Nether. <laughs> Welcome, Welcome to, to Amsterdam. We started off a three-week adventure in Europe in Amsterdam. Where bicycles, canals, and museums come to mind. It's about the size of Seattle. And is the largest city in the Netherlands which is a small country in northwestern Europe. It's a constitutional monarchy. Dutch is the official language. The currency is the euro. It has many notable humans who have called it home, like Eddie Van Halen, Anne Frank, Mata Hari, Van Gogh, Rembrandt, Vermeer, Johan Krauf, and even Minnesota's own Burt Blyleven. So twins! Amidst shifting domains in Europe of the centuries, it most recently gained full independence in 1813. Though Nazi Germany did occupy the Netherlands during World War II. Which we'll talk about more in a bit. Even on a rainy day in Amsterdam, there's still plenty to do. Come along with us. We went to the market and got pofferches. Anywhere we go in Europe, if you have tiny pancakes, we're in. They put Nutella on them, we gobbled them up. They were just so good. So we went to Rudy's Original Strip Waffles. It's open. And they make it fresh right in front of you. They let us film, which was so nice. It's cool to see like how they do it, their techniques. If you order the chocolate, half is covered in chocolate, and then you have to wait for that side to cool. I love it. Oh, it's so warm and nice. It is really good. I was going to take another bite, but this is yours. MoCo is a modern art museum. It's basically a multi-story house. Banksy is one of my favorite artists. To see all those artworks from him in MoCo was amazing. I just like his art. Like, it always means something normally. Highlights for me were the Banksy exhibit, Brian Donnelly, and the CGI masterpiece. Everything was growing flowers. Like, the waterfall was flowers. And it was just super chill and tranquil. Every piece of art was cool, funny, boring or political. What I like about art is even if you don't like it, it gives you something fun to talk about. Okay, this is so funny because it's like saying chalk alonely messes up your tongue because it's like, ugh. It's really cute and they have like these big levers you can pull and the chocolate bar comes down and it just feels a tiny bit magical. So when you look in the window, it's like, it's actually like a real conveyor belt making the chocolate. Elliot and I chose a dark chocolate hazelnut cream and it was fantastic. Me and dad, just the plain milk chocolate. And the foodie in me died a little bit until I remembered. Sometimes the simplest things really are the best. I don't know if everyone's this way, but if I have sweets, I need something savory. I can't just have sweets. So. We had tagliatelle and we had ravioli, and it was amazing, just amazing. It was so delicious. The next day, we went to the Anne Frank house. It's not just this tiny building that I was expecting. The museum has built out, and so it includes so much more information, as well as the tour of the annex where the people were hiding during the war. We read ahead of time that it's best to book your tickets in advance for the Anne Frank Museum, and we're glad that we did. You definitely want to book the introduction as well. It's the only place in the museum where they let you take photos or video and it's the only view of the outside of the annex that you can actually see. It was really informative and it was so well done. So for the past few months, we've been studying the world wars. And for this Europe trip, we wanted to explore stories of real people from the first half of the 20th century and see how the events of the past shaped their experience and ask ourselves, how does it relate to today? When the sun rose on that fateful day, the Nazis invaded the Netherlands. Without warning or the slightest provocation, they unleashed upon their innocent neighbor the full terror and fury of a devastating blitzkrieg. Anne Frank's story is a familiar one. She was born in Frankfurt, Germany in 1929. As persecution of the Jews intensified in Germany, her family moved to Amsterdam in 1933, where her father Otto started a business. And during the German occupation of the Netherlands in World War II, the Franks went into hiding in the annex of Otto's office building, along with a Van Pels family and a dentist named Fritz. And chronicled her thoughts and experiences in hiding for over two years. Before being discovered in 1944, when they were all sent to concentration camps. Anne died in Bergen-Belsen in 1945, and of everyone in hiding, only her father Otto survived. 
The first time I read The Diary of Anne Frank, I was in eighth grade, so I was about 13 or 14. And I remember relating to her so well. It seemed more real because it was like, that could have been a kid I went to school with. I like to remember Anne Frank as an author. I feel like she would have rather been remembered as an author than that girl who was killed by the Nazis. It was interesting to come back to Anne Frank's story with kids. So now I'm seeing it from a completely different perspective. And it was heartbreaking in a totally different way. What I have always loved and what stands out to me the most, though, is her hope. I love how she still had hope in people and believed in people. I feel like they would feel both like afraid and hopeful. I think it's so valuable and important to show our children history and to look at history, even if it's history we don't want to see. So of all the places to live, why did the Franks choose Amsterdam? We'll answer that question at a different museum. We went to the Dam Square. It's where the royal palace is. The Dam Square is really cool. It has the National Monument for Remembrance of World War II. It's a really beautiful area. It may have been 28 euro, but it was worth it. Yeah, I see the Miffy Bunny all over, so it's like, you gotta get it there. Don't worry, nobody's judging you. Nobody's judging you. We got kibling from this fish place. This is kibling. It's a fried fish, and it's really popular in the Netherlands. It's so tasty. Five with the sauce, two and a half without it, because it's just fish. Uh -huh. mm -mm. It's so good. And he liked it before he had the sauce. Hey. She's an adult, and adults are boring. That's why she wants that it's plain and good. I'm so fun. <laughs> now to the windmills. We're here. Huh? It was actually pretty easy to get to the windmills. It was just about a 45 minute train ride. It wasn't too expensive and it didn't take too long. We actually pulled it off in an afternoon. We went to Zonsiskans. We got to see like real windmills. Ones that were made to build, make like grind stuff, like old type. And when you're doing your research, you don't actually have to go into the museum. You can pay for the individual windmills while you're there. The windmills were really pretty. It's definitely not like what I was expecting. For some reason, I was still like, okay, this is gonna be fun. It was really pretty there. It was super fun. We just walked around with the cocoa. It, it was a make your own cocoa, so it's like you decide to put the amount of sugar in and everything. Because Matt had missed me putting sugar into my cocoa, I may have added more sugar than the recipe called for, which might be why, for an American at least, the cocoa was really good. <laughs> I have been super geeked out to be in the Netherlands because my godmother is from here. Hi, Joe. And having a godmother from the Netherlands. I grew up very familiar with a lot of Dutch things. So it's been really meaningful for me to be here and see all of this. It was really cool. You could uh, see a guy making the shoes. Seeing the demonstration of how the wooden shoes were made was so cool for me because I've had this pair since I was like four years old. Like, look at these little cuties. I used to wear these. The little village was really pretty. I, I don't know if I'd want to live in a place where people can just walk in my yard and look inside my windows. I didn't mean to look inside their windows. I mean, as we're walking, I would glance in, but it's so cute and cozy in there. It was so cozy. Before we left for the trip, Elliot would like to turn on live webcams of Amsterdam. So we went to Central Station and we actually found the camera that films the live feed. So we waved at it. Mom also made a giant star. <laughs> and you could see it, but like 30 seconds later. Do you see it? <laughs> Did you see it? The little guy was me on there. The little ant, right there. Star formation. For us, a must in Amsterdam was the Rijksmuseum. It's big, immersive, they've got lots of great works of art. Kids are free, so that's always a huge bonus for us. It's like a goose. We saw one of Rembrandt's paintings called The Night Watch. The painting was massive and true to life, it was really cool. Naked paintings, portrait paintings. And they had Monet. Famous-ish paintings. One of my favorite artists is Vermeer. famous sure paintings. For a kid, you know, it's a ton of old paintings. You don't have to stop at every single painting, but just gravitate to the ones that interest you. Okay, Matt has this thing where if you're eating an ice cream cone, he asks if he can have a bite, and when he takes a bite, this is what he does. 
He takes a bite from the bottom. One of the things that fascinated me is they had this collection of old clocks, still working and still accurate. It doesn't have a very good retirement plan though, but I'm because it's 300 years old and it's still working. Maybe I'm easily impressed, but it was amazing to me. And we got to see Van Gogh there too. Not him, I mean him. It's a painting of him, by him, but not him because he's dead. So why did the Franks choose Amsterdam? Well, in part because of this guy. I mean, indirectly, of course, because we tend to view time as linear, but we really should understand time as layers. It's the present stacked upon the past. It's a time stack, not a timeline. Check this out, William the Silent, or he was also known as William of Orange, was once a man favored by the Spanish kingdom that dominated much of Europe, including the Netherlands. However, when William, who was a Calvinist, discovered that Catholic Spain was determined to crush all forms of Protestantism, he rebelled and many followed. And around that same time, seven provinces of the Netherlands signed a treaty known as the Union of Utrecht. It was a defensive alliance to resist the suppression of Protestantism and to resist the imposition of Catholicism by the Spanish kingdom. And within this document, in Article 13, was an idea that each individual enjoys freedom of religion and no one is persecuted or questioned about his religion. The Protestant Reformation, William's Revolt, and the Union of Utrecht, each of them seeds scattered among others in the garden of personal religious freedom that eventually created a religious safe haven for Jews like the Franks, and an idea that would eventually spread around the world. But we'll come back to that. Hi. We're going underground, is what I think. We went on a boat tour that was about an hour through the canals of Amsterdam. They have an annual light festival in the city, and all of the displays are along the canals, which is great for a nighttime canal ride. Amsterdam is pretty at night. You can also find these light displays by walking around the city, but I prefer boating to going on foot. It was so cozy on the boat and it was really cool to see the lights and the different artwork that we passed along the way. They had like glowing people, which were pretty cool because they all like meant something. It shows people sitting on benches at basically the best view of the canals, and the art piece is of them all looking down at their phones instead of looking out at the view. It was pretty powerful, and considering we were all on the boat with our phones out, <laughs> it was a little, it was a good time for self-reflection. We saw an old Dutch ship. It was really cool. When the artificial intelligence voice that's playing through the speakers is roasting artificial intelligence, I mean, what's better than that? That lady was real. She totally wasn't real. She was AI. But she had a pretty voice. It's video game-like appearance. Give it a tranquil vibe, almost as if it says to a viewer, slow down, relax, take a break. There's great art all over the city of Amsterdam. Even our grocery store had a cool mural on it. Something Matt really wanted to see was the Straat Museum. There's this really cool mural of Anne Frank on the outside. I'm so glad we all decided to go into the museum because it was amazing. It was really cool. It was the street art museum. They bring artists to the museum to paint. The Straat Museum was really, really amazing. I love all different types of art, but the street art, there's something so fun and fresh about it. Even though this is kind of a new way of doing art, I like seeing the techniques they've borrowed from the artists we saw in the other museums where their work is much older. Yeah, so this is a graffiti museum, if you haven't noticed already. Um, in the graffiti museum, uh, there's a lot of graffiti. All of the street art was super cool. Graffiti is my favorite art style. If you don't know what graffiti is, you've probably been living under the rock. <laughs> you smell the rock! He's cooking. Okay, show a picture of it. My favorite piece of art, it was just in plain black text. There were so many pieces of art that were so moving and they're gigantic, so you get to just stand in front of them and it's like you just get swallowed up in them. There is a fun scavenger hunt for little kids that I may or may not have I've done. And if you complete the scavenger hunt and take it to the shop at the end, they give you a little gift. The 
art was also cool. The Strat Museum was maybe our family favorite as a museum. I would definitely recommend it. This is the Auschwitz Memorial. It's so moving to see how the Dutch continue to remember and honor their own. Those who were discriminated against and killed because of their race or beliefs. Memorials like these are a reminder of why history is so important. So, hundreds of years ago, William of Orange and the Union of Utrecht helped enshrine religious freedom in the Netherlands. Which is why the Franks moved to Amsterdam. But what does that have to do with us in the 21st century? There's this guy named James Madison who is crucial to the drafting and adoption of the Bill of Rights in a new country called the United States. There in the First Amendment are words with a familiar tone. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Madison actually cited the Netherlands example in a letter to Edward Livingston. The example of Holland, he said, proved that the toleration of different religions was, quote, safe and even useful. And what's more, he took it even a step further by making sure that it didn't imply just the acceptance of a favored religion with toleration of others, but the free expression of all. A value present in some form in a majority of countries today, but still sadly lacking in many others. You see, it's easy to discard the past as irrelevant. But the truth is that our present lives are stacked on layers of the past. A collection of decisions and actions by humans like you and me that shape how we live today. And that understanding should inform the choices we make for our future. Yeah, um, th thanks for watching. Make sure to, like we used to say, subscribe, lick the bell. We'll see you next time. In Brussels. How about... <laughs>